Hello summoners and welcome to another episode of Pro Guides as Best Champions to Main, now on patch 1221. The champions we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken contested picks in each role, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll start things off in the top lane with Lilia. She does come with a bit of a learning curve though. Most champions either go in hard on extended trades or deal a burst damage and sit back while waiting on cooldowns to come back. With Lilia, you do a bit of both. You want extended fights, but you don't just fully commit to sitting in close range. You constantly dip in, land Q, then dance around just outside of your foes' range, waiting for it to come back up. It's not rocket science, but you do have to learn your limits against various matchups. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over to ProGuides.com for some professional help now. The next top laner we have is Garen. This big guy is a good champ to stick in pretty much any meta. For a champion that does so much damage, he's stupidly tanky and even with a small lead, is basically a juggernaut assassin hybrid, one-shotting squishy targets he can get onto in the mid or late game. The Conqueror page is overall best in most matchups, but it is worth noting that Phase Rush is also a very strong option when you need the chasing power. The last top laner for today is Ola. If you like to play super aggro and solo carry games, he's 100% the champion for you. Obviously, you always want to be a bit calculated with how you take trades, but for the most part, your plan is to ghost at your lane opponent, ignite them and fight an all-in every time you have your summoners up. Once ahead, the best advice I have for you is to almost never group up. It's a lot easier for you to 1v2 or even 1v3 in a side lane than it is for you to group up and try to 5v5. Taking a look now at the jungle, our first pick is Elise. The key to maining Elise is learning how to play a high tempo, efficient early game. She's so snowbally that once you get good at her, you can basically close out games before the enemy team even really gets the chance to play. One of the biggest strengths Elise has over other junglers is her ability to turret dive as early as level 3. This can be a bit scary at first, but you gotta learn her limits to play this champ to the max. Once you get good at this, you'll be tilting enemy laners every game with the no counterplay dives that Elise has to offer. For a pretty good stretch of this season, Volibear was easily the best jungler in the game. After some nerfs here and there, he was knocked down to a point where he was good, but not great. Now, after a lot of nerfs to other top tier picks and just a general shift in the meta over time, he's back to being one of the highest performing picks. Not only is he objectively strong, but he's also incredibly easy. He's super beefy, does tons of damage, and makes turret dives a breeze, all without having to worry about complicated combos or hard to hit skill shots. Basically, you just go in. The last jungler we have for you today is Scion. At first look, Scion jungle doesn't really seem like it does all that much. He's slow, clunky, and his only CC for ganks, aside from his ultimate, has a long wind up time. But once you actually play him, it just sort of clicks. There are plenty of champions that succeed in the jungle without having to focus on early ganks. Just look at Shivana and Fiddlesticks. And while he fills a different niche than those two, he can still have a huge impact in teamfights. It takes a bit of time to pull off, but landing a Scion ult into Q combo deals a ton of damage, while also keeping foe CC long enough for your allies to move in and finish them off. Now for the mid lane, we have Anivia. Anivia is the perfect champ if you just want to neutralize the laning phase and scale up for the mid game. When you pick her, your game plan is pretty simple. Depending on the matchup, you can be a bit more aggressive, but if your foe is a strong early champion that can force trades on you, just hold your spells and use them defensively. Take whatever farm you can get levels 1 through 5, and once you have your ult and lost chapter, the laning phase is basically over. 
you'll just melt wave after wave, completely eliminating the need to interact with your opponent. Now you're free to scale up and carry fights later on. Our second mid laner is Echo. Much like what happened with Vex earlier this season, the seemingly small buff to his Q on 1219 made him a much stronger laner, which in turn makes it easier to reach the mid game where he really starts to come online. For his build, there are a lot of options. The one we have is sort of the go-to generic one, but you can make adjustments like swapping out Nashers for Magi's for a more one-shot heavy build or adding a Zhonya's if you really need the safety though his ult should have you covered there if you're playing right. If playing to carry on your own isn't really your thing and you'd rather just enable allies, maybe Zillion is the champ for you. Being almost entirely team reliant may sound like a bit of a gamble in solo queue, and I mean it kind of is, but the majority of the time there is at least one good teammate you can play around. And if you do want a bit of extra carrying power, there are some adjustments you can make for your itemization. Grabbing Sork Shoes and Ludens gives you some really hard hitting burst. Add a stack Magi's on top of that, then you can actually one shot squishy targets that you catch out with your double bomb combo. Swapping to a perfect champion that relies heavily on working with a solo queue team may sound kind of scary, but honestly, it's not like you're a perfect player either, right? Oftentimes, people have the lowest win rates on the champions they try to solo carry on and do better when they open themselves up to the picks that are all about working with the team. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you have the highest win rate on for this season? What about the lowest? Do you want to share that one too? To make it at least somewhat accurate, make sure it's champions where you have at least 25 or 30 games. 3-0 isn't exactly a good measure. I'll go first. I have a 71% win rate on Volibear and a 46% win rate on Cho'Gath. But that's me and we want to hear from you. So let us know which champions and what your win rates are on them down in the comments section below. Now let's get back to the video. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have is Karthus. If you're tired of relying on a support to peel for you in fights, then maybe you should give him a go. In fact, dying is sort of the entire point with him. When dead, you can't be CC'd and you're getting maximum last stand value, so you're allowed to freely rain down death on your opponents as they continue fighting your allies. Just don't forget to press R before the cast window expires. The next bot lane carry we have is Kog'Maw. Even when Kog is at his strongest, he's never really all that popular. I think one of the main reasons for that is people have a big misconception about the early game strength of hyper carries. They think that just by default, a champion with super strong scaling must be weak early, but that's not really the case. In fact, Cog's early game DPS actually beats out a lot of other champions. The key is fighting around his W's cooldown and staying safe when it's down. If you can do that, he's more than capable of holding his own in almost any 2v2 matchup. The last bot laner we have for today is Neela. Usually new champions are super overloaded, overtuned, and popular, a formula that usually results in them being nerfed again and again and again. Neela is definitely really strong, but she hasn't been nearly as popular. So aside from some bug fixes and a hotfix right after she came out, Neela has been completely untouched. She's 100% a champion that you should at least try out, even if you don't think playing a melee bot lane carry sounds fun to you. You would be surprised how well she manages to play the lane and how insanely strong she is once you make it to the mid game. Now for our supports. The first pick we have is Zyra. If you're a regular viewer, you know that we push Zyra every chance we can get. But I mean, she's just that broken. She is by far the most lane dominant support, so if you play to win the lane for your AD carry, there's no reason you shouldn't at least have her in your champion pool. The range on her poke is insane, but unlike other mage supports, she's not just limited to sitting back and poking. Her plants give good DPS for extended fights, and if you land her E and R, she also has big burst and crowd control for all in fights. The second support we have is Nami. While she's not quite the Omega lane bully that Zyra is, she's definitely the best champion for that playstyle out of all the enchanters. The only other one that does as much as she does in lane is Karma, 
but the second you're out of laning phase, Karma falls off immensely, while Nami continues being useful with her grab bag of utility and sustain. Finishing off our list, we've got Rel. One thing to keep in mind when playing Rel is that she is not a traditional hard engage support. With Flash Up, you may be able to find a good window to wombo the enemy team, but for the most part, you should be playing her a bit reactionary. She's usually at her best when you're following up on an allies engage or counter engaging an opponent's. And that is it for our top three champions to main on 1221. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know your highest and lowest win rate champions for this season down in the comments section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.